Hey, can, okay, I was going to say you can all hear me uh, uh, well enough. Thanks very much for, for giving me the time. As you said, uh, I'm actually, I have to start with a confession. I'm not the founder of the company. I'm the president of the company, and uh, this is an area of passion that I have. So we're based in the Pacific Northwest. The company was founded about four years ago. Uh, actually, our founder is uh, the ex-CTO of Nuance. So, you know, has a 30-year background in voice, AI, and speech recognition in, uh, in healthcare. Uh, and then he decided that what he'd like to do is he'd, he'd like to kind of create the next generation of that capability. Uh, I came on board more recently. My background is I'm a renal physician, but I've spent the last 30 years working in health information technology. In fact, as I joked to uh, the founder, I actually created a number of the EHRs that we're now trying to resolve the documentation problem for. for. So I'm kind of paying my dues uh, as I move into this space. So we're a, we're a, a voice-enabled AI assistant, and I'll kind of explain to you uh, what that means. How many of you here, uh, I, I assume all of you have heard of meaningful use? Well, for those of you who know about meaningful use, it was around the adoption of electronic health record technology. We've moved, in my words, from meaningful use to meaningless interaction. The problem is that we've got doctors now who have been turned into scribes and data entry clerks. So there's, a, there's an epidemic problem, and if uh, some of you are physicians, you'll feel it yourself. If not, you uh, probably have heard about this, which is about 50% of all physicians are, are burned out. They've lost the joy of practicing medicine. They're spending uh, up to two to three hours a night trying to catch up with their, with their charting. And so you can imagine that that then bleeding over from your day into the evening is, is something that uh, people don't like. They're spending about six hours in the EHR uh, every day. That's, that's over half of the day that they have that they're interacting with. And then two hours in the EMR doing charting for every hour that they spend with the patient. Something's wrong. And so our mission was to try and give doctors back the gift of practicing medicine and to reduce dramatically the amount of time that they would spend uh, doing that documentation. So the problem is it, it's, it reduces productivity. You've got the docs turning their back on the patient. Patients don't feel engaged. Doctors doesn't feel engaged. Um, you know, and there's significant turnover with physicians. And they just don't have any time, both with the patients as well as with their family. So, uh, what, uh, what we did is we created a thing, uh, a, a, a utility called Kara. So if you're familiar with um, Siri or with Alexa, you can almost think of it as Siri or Alexa for the exam room. But it's a little bit more than that because um, you know that if you're speaking to a, you know, your, your favorite Siri or, or, or Alexa app, you can say a few words and, and it gets confused after about more than seven, seven words. This listens into the entirety of the conversation, so it's a, it runs entirely on the smartphone, so it's detethered from the EHR, it's screen free, you look at the patient, you interact with the patient, and it listens ambiently to what's going on. You're not interacting then trying to, to look at what it's asking you to do next, you just ignore the EHR, and so it provides you with then rapid and streamlined document creation. So, so here's the way that it works. You, you're in the exam room, you've turned it on, uh, you've found the patient, and then you just say, uh, you, you ask it to start listening. It starts listening, and as the conversation continues, you, all that we ask that you do is that uh, it'll listen for uh, the, in, the interaction that you have with the patient. Because we don't have cameras in the room, is that if you do a physical exam, you're gonna have to just you know, uh, talk out loud either in the exam room or if you take it after, after the exam room and do it in the hallway, you, can, you just speak out loud. And, and then you know, also when you're placing orders or follow-up or, or referrals or, or other uh, scheduling uh, activities, you want to see the patient in three weeks, you just talk. And so what happens is the, the AI runs through that. We take, the, uh, we take the speech, we decompose it using natural language processing algorithms, and then we try and map it against the way that we know that you like to write notes. So we look at hundreds of notes that the doctor's written uh, across multiple templates. We look at their templates, and then what we do is we map our NLP to that. So what we then do is based on your simple interaction with the patient, we'll then decompose that and then regenerate a full note. So essentially, it will create that note for you, and all that you need to do is to then sign off on it. Just much like if you have a driverless vehicle, uh, you still need to have a human in the loop a little bit just so that it's act providing guardrails. So we call that person a reviewer. 
they're, uh, they're really a QA function, so that the idea is they'll look at what Kara came up with, with the AI. They'll see how accurate it was, and if there's any tweaking that is needed, they'll make that tweak that gets fed back into our AI to refine the machine learning so that next time it becomes more and more accurate. So as we get more data on board, the machine learning as well as the, the, the voice recognition, the entire process and the note synthesis becomes more and more accurate. So the AI improves with time and, uh, and we'll get to a stage where you know, we'll be able to use Kara uh, essentially reviewer free. We expect that by mid-year next year will be multiple types of encounters where you just don't need to have a reviewer. It, it'll automatically manage that based on just a natural conversation with the patient. You can use it ambiently, as I talked about, sitting with the patient in the room, or if you choose to, you can do it in a summary mode where if you feel more comfortable, you can just do that after you leave the room before you see the next patient, then you're done. Basically, it's gonna come back into the HR and you're gonna, you're gonna have it come back in. It'll integrate into the HR. We have integration with Epic, with Cerner, with Allscripts, and three other uh, of the major EHRs. And what it'll do is it'll pull all of that in. You give scribe level access. It will pend that note for you. And all you need to do is review it for accuracy and sign it off. So we, what we end up doing here is we end up saving a significant amount of time. Let me just briefly, very briefly, say that where we're going with this though is that we'd, we're providing a sort of a chat bot front end to this so that patients can <coughs> capture information, pre-visit, that will automatically then populate the history of present illness, reduces the amount of time and helps to refine the ML for that visit again so that I can better predict what orders I expect to see, what types of follow-up I expect, and then uh, that will automatically again refine the ML. So. If you want to spend 70% less time on documentation, you want to eliminate 100% of after hours charting, increase the number of patients. If you see more than another three patients a week, this pays for itself. You've got happy doctors, you've got happy patients, and you've got a system where docs are no longer scribes. That's it, thank you. Uh, via the Slido app, and we'll ask Dr. Graham Hughes to pick his favorite question to answer in a minute or so. Will those automatically pop up then? Has anyone actually submitted a question yet? <laughs> if not, we can take one from the audience as an alternative, so please. Yeah, we really have found that the, uh, the speech recognition part of this is, is the part that actually is the easiest for us. So there's no need nowadays, I mean, maybe 10 years ago, you had to do a long training period so that if your accent was different or that if you had a particular uh, you know, way of speaking, is that it needed to pick up. We basically will do uh, a short trial period of two or three days of, of pre-run with you as you see patients, it'll sort of run in shadow mode. Uh, and then we haven't come across anyone who has an accent that we haven't been able to deal with after that learning period of like two to three days. And you don't go through some sort of weird script of you know, having to read through Wikipedia or something odd like that. You just have to see your patients, uh, review it, and then uh, the ML will pick it up. So um, it, we haven't come across it as a big problem now. The, the, the ASR, the speech recognition has got so much more advanced uh, nowadays. Thank you very much. Thank you.